Are you a beginner looking to install the Amazon Command Line Interface or CLI? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas, and this is Bear with Brain Trust Digital. We're full stack developers obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning about full stack web development or related topics, please consider subscribing below. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to install the AWS CLI. This is an open source tool that allows you to interact with all of Amazon's services via the command line. So pretty much anything you could do via the web console, you can do via your terminal application while using this tool. As you become more comfortable with your terminal application of choice, it's gonna be faster to pass these services as options via the terminal. So with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial to discuss how to install the AWS CLI. As you can see, we're on the AWS command line interface documentation page. Um, don't worry, I'll link to this in the show notes under the latest version. We're gonna click user guide. Then we're gonna navigate down to getting started and install slash update. You may wanna read through the documentation uh, especially this important note about removing an older version. If you have version one of the AWS CLI, you're gonna to wanna to remove that first. Since I don't have that version on my machine, I'm gonna scroll down to the installation instructions. Next, you're gonna pick your operating system. In my case, I'm on Mac OS, so I'm gonna expand that tab. Here, there are a couple options. You have the uh, GUI installer, as well as the command line installer for all users or the command line installer for the current user. I'm gonna go with the installer for all users, but feel free to choose whatever works best for you. The first thing we have to do is run a couple of these commands. The first one pulls down the AWS CLI version two, and the next one then runs the installer. So to do so, we're gonna click copy here. We'll flip over to our terminal. Here, if I type PWD, you can see our present working directory. I default into the code directory, so I'm gonna see the upper level. I just install this, the base user directory. I'm gonna paste in those commands and hit enter. Now I need to enter my password, hit enter again. That is gonna continue installing. Now that that's complete, let's flip back over to the directions. As you can see, we've already completed steps one and two. Those just break out the steps we copied above and ran. So we're actually on to step three now. Here we're gonna verify our install. To do so, you'll type which AWS. So that tells us where the CLI tool was installed. Now let's go ahead and check the version. You check the version by passing in AWS dash dash version. Then you can see we have version 2.4.27. Now that we've successfully installed the CLI, we need to configure it. So here at the bottom with next steps, we're gonna click quick setup. So it'll take us to the next set of documentation where they'll walk us through the setup of the command line tool. So what you'll see here is we're gonna run the AWS configure line and then we're gonna pass in some credentials, an access key ID and a secret access key. You're not gonna use the credentials in red. Those are just for example. We're gonna to have to fetch those from our AWS account. So let's go ahead and log in and grab those now. As you can see, I've logged into my account off camera. The next thing we're gonna do inside of the AWS console here is create a new user so that I can show you how you retrieve those, uh, those secret key values. Uh, that is the... Uh, the AWS access key ID and secret access key. So here in the search bar, we're gonna go ahead and type IAM, it's identity access management, and then we'll click on the result. Here we'll click users, and then we're gonna click add user. We'll call this user IAM CLI user. This is very important that you click the access key for programmatic access. This will provide us with the keys that we need to configure our AWS CLI. Then we'll go ahead and click next to permissions. Next, you have the opportunity to set permissions. You can add the user to a group if you've already created one, copy permissions from an existing group, or attach policies directly. We're gonna choose this method for our case. Now we're gonna go ahead and search for S3 full access. We'll check the check mark and then click next onto tags. We're not gonna add any tags at this point, so we'll just click next to review. Here you can see the summary of what we've done. So let's go ahead and create this user. This is an important point. Here are your access key ID and secret access key. Once you leave this page, these are no longer ever retrievable. So if you ever lose these, you'd have to go ahead and just create a new user. You might want to download the CSV here. I'm not gonna download my keys as I've only created this user for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm just going to paste them in as we configure our CLI. So let's flip back over to the terminal. We'll type in ADBS configure and hit enter. The first input here, they're looking for our access key ID. As you can see here, you can click the copy button, flip back over and then paste this key in. Now they're looking for our secret access key. 
Here, we're gonna click show, copy this key, flip back over to the terminal and paste. The next input here is default region name. In my case, that's US East 1. So here, if you click the drop down, you can see the list of regions. Next, we need to set our default output format. For this, we're gonna go ahead and type JSON, and we'll hit enter again. Now that we've got ABS installed and configured, let's go ahead and list our S3 buckets. We can do so because we enabled programmatic access, which gave us those keys, and we also gave the permissions of full S3 access. We'll type ABS, S3, and then LS for list of the S3 buckets. Some of these are client projects, so out of respect, I'm gonna cover half this screen here, but one that we can definitely check out is the aws-rails.com bucket. We covered this in a previous tutorial where we showed how to serve a static website from an S3 bucket. If you'd like to watch that tutorial, I'll link that in the upper right corner as well as the show notes. So we'll type aws, S3, LS, and then the name of our bucket that we use for that tutorial. In this case, adbs-rails.com. You hit enter, and you can see all of the files that we added to that bucket. The ADBS CLI has tons of subcommands. Pretty much any service that you can use on the console, you can also use via the CLI. For a full list of all the options, you'll type in adbs-help. You can scroll down to see all the services one by one, and it just goes on for a while. Obviously, that list is pretty long, so if you'd like to narrow it down to a specific service and get help or see documentation around that service, then you could type, for example, AWS S3 help. This is gonna give us information just about the AWS S3 service. So there you can see available commands and options. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, will you please don't forget to like and subscribe or potentially even share it with a friend that you think might be interested. And with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.